Hey y'all, I'm Paul Mosley, Director of Youth Discipleship at Douglasville First United Methodist Church, and this is week two of our renewed series, The You Effect. I have to admit something to y'all. I like watching videos of people failing. Now, I don't mean failing at life or failing at their proposal or, or, or finding out they failed an exam. I'm talking about the guy who tries the skateboard trick and busts it. Or the girl who tries a front handspring and ends up laid out on the ground. The, the duo that, that tries a dance routine and bumps heads. Or the cat that, you know, jumps at a bird outside and smacks into the window. I mean, y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Now, I don't want to see anyone seriously injured. I don't. But I'll admit, seeing other people failing is super entertaining, right? When I see videos like these, I notice they all have something in common. The person in the video is never alone. Whether they're doing something ridiculous, amazing, or stupid, they're almost always someone else with them. And the same is true for me, and maybe it's true for you, too. Maybe for you, that means a friend uh, talked you into wearing pajamas at Walmart and you feel ridiculous. Or your friend talked you into asking a girl out who's way out of your league. Or your teammates are trying to pull off a prank and you jump in as well. Chances are you've done something ridiculous, funny, uncomfortable, or completely unlike you because of your friends. And that isn't a school thing or a teenager thing, it's a human thing. It's crazy how powerful of an effect we can have on each other. That's why last week we began to talk about this series, The You Effect, and we talked about how all of us have more of an effect on others than we think. And because of that, God can do more than we ever imagined with our influence, right? And that's where things get tricky though, isn't it? Even if we know we have an effect on others, it can be hard to believe that that effect is important or world-changing. Of course, our culture is filled with messages about how we can change the world or change the future or save the planet, right? I mean, listen to this one from Apple founder Steve Jobs. He says, the ones who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones that do it. And I know that's supposed to be inspiring, but honestly, I can't help but think, that's great, Steve. Let's see, you have a brain of a genius, the staff of a giant global company, and the budget of Apple. What do I have? Well, I think I have like four bucks in my wallet, some leftover Taco Bell, and a pretty good shot at losing my keys, wallet, knife, and phone all in the same day. We are not the same, Steve. Okay, that's, maybe that's just me. Maybe you don't feel that way. But I imagine nearly everyone here uh, listening feels a little skeptical about the whole let's go change the world message we hear so often. I mean, we're not against making the world a better place. It's possible to have a big effect on the world when you're just one person. Can we do it if we're just one person from our towns, at our schools, and in our families? Well, there's a book in the New Testament called Acts. I mean, believe it or not, each of us has been affected by the events recorded in this book. Acts records the actions of the first followers of Jesus and how their decisions changed everything throughout the Roman Empire and for all of history. In fact, they back then were the first version of this kind of group that we're in right now. There's a powerful moment that happens when these early followers of Jesus were gathered together. It's called Pentecost. The Spirit of God showed up in what was described as a violent win, right? The people began worshiping God in a big way, and the people who witnessed this were confused. They were like, um, what in the world is happening right now? In fact, some of them thought that the followers of Jesus were wasted. Kid you not, look it up. But Peter, one of Jesus' followers, stood up and explained that they weren't drunk at all. He took the opportunity to talk about Jesus after Peter preached a powerful message about who Jesus was and what Jesus was about. Look what happened next. Here's the scripture. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the apostle, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise 
is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted this message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. So this fisherman, right? This fisherman named Peter, this average guy who messed up all the time, stood up and preached and it had a massive effect. A lot of people were impacted. 3,000 it says. Can you imagine something you said or did made 3,000 people want to do anything? This kind of influence we'd all love to have on the world, right? This is what we're talking about when we talk about big influence, big movements, big results, right? But what happened, what's interesting is what happens next. These new followers of Jesus didn't just walk away telling Peter, great sermon, and then go back to minding their own business. They put what they heard into action at once. Listen to this. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and to the fellowship, to breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to anyone who was in need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number those who were being saved daily. Here's that phrase again, added daily. It didn't stop at the 3,000 listening to Peter. More and more people began to follow Jesus because of the Jesus followers, right? These people made up the early church. You know, they didn't even use the word church back then. They were instead known as a gathering of people with a shared cause. They didn't know that a couple thousand years later, we'd be sitting here watching a video, talking about them, learning from them, right? They were trying to start a big, they weren't trying to start a big movement and get a bunch of Instagram followers or be known as influencers. They were living their lives as people who had heard about Jesus and were changed by him. Something big happened in their lives that changed them and influenced them and caused them to live their lives differently than they had before. So what did they do that was so different? What was so big that it led them to change the world and become credited as the people who started the church as we know it? Well, it's actually quite simple. History from the book of Acts tells us that they shared, that they gave to each other, they met together, and they ate together. In other words, they were with each other and they were for each other. The things they, they did were behaviors, but they weren't based in the character but they were based in their character and their shared mission they believed in. They were changed people who had been transformed by the love of Jesus. Something big happened in their lives that influenced them, but it was the small steps they took that gave them influence. These people started a movement that had influenced millions over 2,000 years, but it started simply by them caring about the people around them. And here's what's crazy. We can assume they had no idea the effect they would have on the Roman Empire the church, or all of history. Each of them individually probably would have said, who am I? I'm a nobody. There is zero chance anyone will ever know who I am or be affected by me. And honestly, that's kind of how the U effect works. Sure, sometimes there's that one person like Peter who preaches and changes thousands of lives. When that happens, it's great. But more often, movements that change the world are started by small groups of people with each other and for each other who are committed to doing something important together. And by the way, throughout history, the vast majority of these world-changing movements were started by teenagers and young adults, people like y'all, often in groups like ours. And here's what I'm getting at. Having a big effect starts with a small group. Sure, the violent wind and the sermon from Peter kick-started the whole movement that is what is now organized into churches and student ministries like ours. But the early church continued to grow. Jesus' message continued to be spread because of individuals looking out for each other and working together. That is what the early church was built on. Can you imagine some of the fears these people dealt with? I mean, if I sell my stuff to help others, what if I don't have enough for myself? What if people don't notice or appreciate or care about my sacrifice? What if I do all this and it doesn't make a difference? And to add to that, the very real fear that the early 
Jesus followers that we would be killed or continue to meet and spread the message together. It would have been totally normal for them to just walk away with death threats and lying on their mind. So despite the natural fear we all would have, why did they continue to do it? The message was bigger than their fear. As they realized just how big the love of Jesus was for them, just how much his coming back changed life and everything about their lives, their mission seemed bigger than their nerves about the whole thing. And I imagine that even when one person was ready to quit, ready to drop out, they had a small group who eventually became a huge group of people cheering for them and reminding them why all this mattered. The same is true for us, right? Having a big effect starts with a small group. It starts with circling up with a few people around you and deciding to do life differently. That's why we do small groups here at Renew. Sure, we want you to have people to hang out with or a safe place to share or a leader you can trust. That's all great. And if you were to ask, there are probably some seniors and juniors in our groups who would tell you that their high school and middle school experience was a thousand times better because of their small groups. But it's more than that too, right? We want you to have a group that is noticeably different. So obviously for each other and with each other that the people around you want to know what's going on. We want you to be part of a group that's so uniquely and obviously transformed by the love of Jesus for you that your people at your school are affected, people on your team are affected, and the people in your family are affected. Ultimately, here's the truth. You have an effect on the people around you, but you will have a bigger effect, a longer lasting effect, if you aren't by yourself. Having a big effect starts with a small group. And here's the catch. None of this happens if you don't, one, show up. The early church did everything together, and it changed everything for them. Now, I'm not saying you have to do everything with your small group, but I am saying that you can have the life-changing effect we're talking about. You have to hang out together. You have to get to know each other. You have to talk to each other outside of this group once a week. Second, you have to stand out. Be honest. As a group, are we noticeably different than any other group of people? Does the way we talk to each other make us the kind of group that people want to be a part of? Does the way we treat each other reflect the way Jesus has changed our lives? If not, it's okay, but how can we work on being the kind of people who have an effect on the world around us? And third, we got to start something. It's great to hang out together uh, online or in person, but what if we start doing something intentionally to have an effect on the people in the rest of the world? What if we decided that we'd all take time to talk to the lonely kid from school? or to celebrate people who might not feel noticed, or volunteer with the kids ministry. I mean, the list goes on. I don't know what your group should do, but here's what I know for sure. People who hang out together and serve together have a different kind of relationship. They have a deeper friendship. They have a better kind of school experience, and they have a far bigger effect than they would ever have imagined on their own. Now, I know a lot of groups won't do this, and that's natural, but imagine for a second if yours did. What would it change at your school or your friend group? What would it change for you personally? A big effect starts with a small group. And I'm praying that that starts for you today. Do what you do when you pray. Hey, Father God. As always, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the fact that what happened 2,000 years ago created and helped guide us to where we are today, but let that work not stop, God. Let us be one of the small groups that have a big change on the world. Let us seek what we can do to best take your word forward. Let us be aware of the needs in our community, and let us take this group that we are we are a part of, Renew Youth, and our small groups that we have on Sunday morning and Wednesday nights, and let us use those groups to affect big change with just our small group of people. Because God, together we are stronger than alone. And we are together, we feel your presence even more. So let your presence be made known and allow us to know what you would have us to do. It's in your name we pray. Amen.